everybody you are watching Witness My Meanies. I'm Peter, this is Wiley, and today we will be watching a stream, one of my first live things ever, really. It was a part of the SquidCon 2024. I was asked to um, kind of hold a class about how I base and create a scene for my miniatures. I couldn't, however, hold it within the time limit, so 45 minutes was the stream time, and I ended up cutting it short. But in the end of this video, I have added the 50 minutes that I had planned, so that you can watch the whole hour. Since it's live, it's totally unedited, and sorry in advance for my stuttering and my ums and ums. So yeah, without further ado, here we go. Hello everybody, uh, I'm Peter, um, I'm from Witness My Minis. Uh, if you don't know me, I've, um, I've been painting miniatures now since uh, 2020. So you, have, you could say that I'm a, kind of a COVID baby, um, like so many others uh, in the hobby. My, my journey started uh, <clears throat> um, when I painted a... Um, unit for a friend for his birthday and of course I went online searching for inspiration and I found Squidmore of course and his early videos about basing and that's why I'm here today I was asked to talk about basing with you guys and the the thing with basing for me is I've been, I've always been thinking of it more of like creating a scene more than pure basing of a uh, miniature. Since a lot of the time our miniatures are standing in a cabinet and <clears throat> uh, not being played with, it's that way for me at least, I often tend to go quite overboard with many of my um, uh, wargaming minis and of course then we're not talking about when we're uh, like painting for display or making di dioramas but so what I thought we would be do uh, doing today was just to start out with with um, going through some of the materials that I use when I base and then we will be taking a look at some of the bases and the miniatures that I've made in the last um, three or four years um, and of course, if there is any questions, if I'm just rambling on too fast, um, be sure to write in the chat and I'll be uh, slowing down or answering anything that you uh, are, uh, are wondering about. So yeah, without further ado, let's start with uh, some of the um, materials. Okay, so first off, I, I believe many of the things that I am about to show you guys, I think a lot of it you have seen before, but there is uh, hopefully some things in there that, that you haven't thought about. And if, um, or even if there is a lot of things that you have seen and used before, maybe maybe there is other ways of thinking 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 about it. So yeah, let's just uh, jump in and we'll see. So here is the first thing in, um, in order. So basically what I've done here is that I've been outside. You can see all the different um, wood material uh, like bark, leaves, stones that I got here. Um, most of the um, small roots that I've gathered have been used up. So I have to take another trip outside soon. But uh, yeah, basically I've just uh, gathered these in the forest and I um, baked them in the oven. So to uh, get rid of any bugs. But these are perfect for breaking apart, making small or big like um, terrain bits or yeah, 
you'll see later i'll show you some some um, varieties of uh, how i've used this in the past and of course it wouldn't be connected to squidmar if we didn't mention the cork bark this was one of the first things that i went out really looking for in stores um i bought it at ikea of course and it's just amazing for those like really ground um, texture with all these small textures and all these small roots and it really 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 brings a lot of interest to a, uh, a ground um, texture also when you uh, glue this down with, with super glue it becomes rock hard um, it's almost creates like a cement uh, but it's really dusty so I yeah you see here how I keep it and yeah, that's the first box um, for uh, yeah this time. Let's let's move on and see what what else we have here. Um, then of course there is tufts. There is a lot of different tufts out there. Um, first, I got some of some from Army Painter. Um, there are a lot of different like undergrowth uh, and bigger thefts but I, I, I later found gamer grass and I really enjoy their um, the feel of them how they um, how they uh, the the difference in scales if you take a look at this for example there's uh, these are like tiny 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 moss and they're really like lifelike and the thing about when we use any kind of bits or terrain uh, things on our miniatures is that we sometimes forget about the scale like paint like if i would were to put a, a tuft in the like like let's say this size this is a huge like thing for a miniature in warhammer scale and this is more more like something that you could find on uh, on on the f the floor or on a like a tree stump or something. Um, lately, I've been I only got one pack, but this these these are cut out uh, in kind of a foil, so you can you can just um, you can take them apart and you can um, uh, like fold the leaves and make them stand the way you want to but it, they, there are there are cutouts in these so yeah you see here that i've used two so far uh kind of kind of cool um moving forward we have to talk about some um sculpting material so of course you have your regular green stuff. Um, I I suppose everybody has heard about these, and I know what uh, Emil thinks about them. That they are often hardened in the middle because they the two components, um, yeah, yeah, as you see, they touch each other, and yeah, it isn't always that great, but it's very often kind of cheap, and depending on what you're doing with it, I think it works kind of okay at least i tend to uh, have a um a small like jar with some like vaseline um just to uh dip my tools in when i when i work with it because it is very sticky so make sure of that so that you don't have a very 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 bad time with just picking it back up picking it back up and yeah, it's 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 not very fun uh, working with it without any kind of lubricant. Then there is of course milliput. Um, basically the same thing, but um, it it's uh, it's not as gooey. It isn't as sticky when you mixed uh, mixed it. And the the thing about milliput is, of course, you get a, a lot of it for. Um, a great value I I would say but most of all it's when it dries you can work with it in different kind of stages 
because first when you've mixed it it's very soft and you can very easily like smoothen it out with water and then after maybe an hour uh, you'll have a semi-hard and then you can cut in it with a knife and then of course like making uh, like if you want to make steps out of it or if you want to um, add some texture maybe with a rock or something you just have to wait for it to, to harden a little bit and then when it's when it's totally dry you um, really can sand it down and you will have a perfectly smooth su surface it is really important to make it as air sealed i keep mine in two zip bags inside because uh, I've had it um, dr uh, like dry out on me before and it's 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 not a pleasant experience so this is how I do it I just uh, take equal part and yeah mix it after afterwards but again we'll come back to like looking at some um, like uh, some bases that I've made when I use this and then we have acrylic resin I don't know if if uh, this is something that uh, most people use I've, I've I've dabbled with it I've done some uh, some stuff with it and it works great together with molds so what you can do is you can you can buy like these guys here and you mix it as, as it says, says right here on the lid uh, three uh, three resin to one water and then you just pour it in here and then it dries and you have like bricks. You can also use something called blue stuff if you haven't seen that before. This is basically just a, a, uh, a silicon feeling thing that you heat up in water like a, a regular pan and then you put something uh, in it when it's uh, still soft and you make a mold. So if you take a look here, what I've done here, I've done some kind of um, machine looking thing, like a motor of some, some sort. And then, and then it's just, uh, you can just pour these in here and yeah, you'll have bits. It's great for people like me that doesn't own a 3D printer. Um, more about that later, but yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that can uh, come in handy. It's just a different tool, like so many other things uh, in, our, in our hobby. So what more? Then, then we have something uh, called Sculpey. So this is a oven baked clay. I use it for making like preparing and making slates with indentations so um, I guess uh, you might have heard about these guys these are roller pins so what I do is I take this sculpey and I flatten it out I then take a roller pin and here we have uh, like a runic roller pin with I don't know if you guys see it here but it's it's all of these uh, like like runic markings and then I cover this in like an oil and I roll it over the sculpey and then I put it in the oven I bake it for like 15 minutes and when that's done I have something looking like this So here we go. Let's see here if you can get it. So these are slates, as you see here. Um, this is this is the runic one that I've just mentioned. I can just break this stuff off and put it on the uh, yeah on the base, either as kind of a floor or if I want like a uh, nasty looking uh, uh, like wall or something with uh, indentations or markings on it. Of course. Uh, these ruler pins comes in all all kinds of different shapes and things. And again, for somebody that doesn't have a 3D printer, things like this 
really makes a difference. Just like having this big size, I can base a lot of a um, lot of miniatures using this. Let's let's look at the the first mini just to just to show you guys what I'm talking about here. I got a uh, Skaven army going with a friend of mine, and as some of you might know, there is. Uh, we, uh, we're playing Warhammer Fantasy Battles, not Old World yet, but but the uh, eighth edi edition, and there there is uh, a lot of rats needed to to run a list for like two thousand four hundred points. So what I did was I started making filler units. So this guy here would be like ten equal ten rats in size. So yeah, you see what I did here. I just used Sculpey. I put one rat. Uh, on uh, on there and then I just used some terrain to make it look cool. Of course, uh, it could be kind of quirky, uh, the wall walking with the unit, but uh, yeah, it's it's just uh, um, the, <laughs> like the, yeah, you, you just have to, to, uh, to make that work in your mind. But for me, at least, it's just most important that it looks kind of cool. Um, okay, let's let's move on. It's a lot of things to go through. Then, of course, we have bits. Uh, so, let's see here if we have some kind of engagement in the chat. Uh, if I throw something out here, can you guys guess what kind of what set this is from? See if you if I hold it up here, maybe you like a roller, like a blade spinning, some kind of thing. Do we have any guesses? No. Ah, we have Blood Bowl or Slanesh. Uh, let's move forward. I'm I'm going to show you guys this. Skaven Lawnmower, that's a good one. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just going to do it like this, okay? I think you guys might have might see what it is now. Um, it's one of those. I'm, I'm actually not quite sure what it's called, uh, but it's it's a, like a plague uh, thing for for Nurgle. Um, one of those flying things. I'll show you one, a picture later for one that I built. But the thing is with some of these kits is that there are so many bits left when you're done and. If you if you're like me and do the odd commission, always 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 make sure that you ask if you can keep the bits, because these bits are great for like this could be anything. This is just uh, mechanical. Yeah, what is it? it? It could be anything, especially when you think about cutting apart and 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 gluing other things to it, or like using these uh, these hoses and cords. It's great uh, and. Talking about bits, let's move forward to this one. This this bit I got from a Tau kit, and it's supposed to be on like a big robot, uh, like his weapon or something. But look at this. I mean, I could put this on a base. Um, fits kind of perfectly, I, I would say. And then I could do all kinds of things all uh, around that. Maybe maybe some rest in here to like put it in the water. I don't know. You know, there is a lot of things like, like when you have bits, the most important thing is to not think of it what it's supposed to be. Think of it instead of like how it could be used for something else, I would say. Um, of course you can use uh, this for like a gun, but you could also cut it up and use it for pipes. There is a lot of things in here that the eye can be tricked. And again, if you don't have a 3D printer, these guys really come in handy. Um, 
Talking about 3D printing, of course, there is something to say about 3D printing. I got a bag from um, Bjorn at the Bjorn the Brush. He printed me some bases, and of course, these are also really um, good to have. But I would say mostly I wouldn't use them as is. I would do something else too. But they are they are a great start off point. For, uh, for a base, uh, for sure. Okay, let's move on and see what else we have in our little bag here. Um, yeah, talking about like water effects and UV resin, uh, like we did before. For UV resin, I used the uh, super expensive uh, Green Stuff World. Of course, I've seen now that you can buy like UV resin for dirt cheap on like uh, Wish or Timu or something like that. Um, the thing with UV resin, of course, is that it's super, super good that you can just use a torch and make it and harden it straight away, whilst other resins and um, water effects take time to uh, to harden or to, to, to cure the way you want them to. If I if I do use other, as of right now, I often go to uh, uh, Still Water from Vallejo. Um, it's a self-leveling um, water texture. So you just pour it on the base and as, uh, you just make sure that you have edges and then you'll have a clean water level. It won't sink in and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's self-leveling, that's, what it's called, I've been told. Um, on top of that, I have to just mention water texture as well. This dries transparent. You can do a lot of things with it. It's great for covering up um, and making uh, waves and foam and stuff. Um, I'll show more about this later. Uh, okay. So what what else? We have Uhu glue uh, in Sweden. It's called Karlsson's Klister, and we have a donkey on it. Um, this is a uh, it's a glue that when it's dried, it it makes kind of strands. Um, you can do a lot of cool things with it. Uh, I'll show more about that later as well. So basically, what we're doing right now is we're going through all the the, the, the different materials, and then I'll show. Like, practic uh, like practical applications about it and make sh make sure to like ask me if hey what did you use there and and I'll I'll spill the beans so what more oh yeah here we go um this is also great to have lying around you can just print out all uh, like small posters or uh, if it were for, for fantasy, it could be like wanted posters or signs and stuff. These I just cut out and I just glue them to uh, to the base. We'll see more pra practical applications for that as uh, later as well. But basically you just Google it, shrink it to the size you want it, and then cut it out, put it on the base. Very simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last but not least, of course, there we have to talk about pigments. So these are the pigments that I have. There is a lot of different ones, uh, earthy tones, and then I have some fluorescent ones as well. Pigments, as I'm sure some of you know, because Squidmore loves to um, talk about them as, as well, they... Um, have the perfect like texture to uh, mimic sand or ground material at the right scale for our miniatures. Like I mentioned before, if you use use regular sand, the the scale will be kind of off. I forgot to mention. This sand is what I used to start out with. So it's just basic like yeah, uh, sand from the beach, very fine grit. And then on top of that, when all, when everything is set and dried, and even if and even after I painted it, I'll go in with the pigments. 
and depending on how much pigment you want to use you can use a um, see where I have it here uh, yeah uh, a pigment binder and the, and yeah it's exactly what it sounds like you will uh, you will have a slighter way to look at first and then depending on how much binder you will use it will dry of course but um, usually when painting for myself I wouldn't use too much of this I would basically just put it on there and and uh, not go overboard a little of pigments can go a long way um, yeah and uh, one thing more that I forgot to mention of course is the basic cork nothing too special about it but making sure that you have it like in regular like cork yeah this is like uh, the thing that you put your uh, hot plate on uh, and then you can get these smaller like thinner ones I think this actually comes in a roll as you see it's kind of uh, yeah it's formed formed like that but with with this you can build elevation and without it costing too much and making like it too hard it's it's really easy to build it up and get the formations that you want and then you can cover it in some kind of like uh, ground texture uh, either either like this or yeah just uh, you can use like water effect that I that I showed you before and you can just put sand in there or yeah there there is there isn't any like you have to do it like this but but um, some kind of elevation um, different uh, like difference is good on uh, on the basis and then to get as much as different textures in there to make it interesting if you want to be lazy you can also get like pre-mixed uh, basing material like this this is from um, this is base ready patchy planes from um, uh, scenic games like uh, Luke um, what's his name yeah I think uh, if you don't know um, uh, like uh, oh yeah he just quit his YouTube I, I'm I, I, th I think you know who I'm talking about uh, great stuff and very very easy if you just want to uh, make a uh, like a whole army you could just uh, put some uh, glue and just dip the base Okay then, it's time to go forward and look at some practical applications on how I use this stuff. So for that, we'll move to the tablet. Okay, let's see here, you guys have to tag along here while I'll switch some stuff around this should have been prepared <laughs> uh, there we go okay so yeah I've, al I've already mentioned this before but as you see here when looking at a regular forest floor there's a lot of different th uh, texture in there and all these like branches some of the leaves maybe I we usually s see when people are making bases but there is a lot of like very 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 small grit like uh, texture in there that we usually miss so and that's where like uh, pigment and and those stuff comes in so have this in mind when making bases that you have to really go from the tiniest speckle and then upwards 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 to like bigger things and to build elevation and build, build interest because the the base has one job and it's to elevate the mini first and foremost so you can build a story but it has to like draw draw your eye in that you keep on looking but it should always like focuses on the the mini in question so yeah 
let's just move forward and and and, and we'll see here so this is a flower knight that I painted for a client. Um, it's from KDM, uh, Kingdom Death Monsters. And I love painting KDM. Um, this is this is just me, as you see here, trying to uh, figure out some kind of composition. Uh, with this guy, there came this uh, music, uh, music instrument. And instead of just, like you see here, it should be standing like right straight up uh, on the base. I thought that would kind of uh, uninteresting. So I tried to to uh, to figure out something else. So yeah, I'm just playing with composition and moving forward. You see here, I found the, the, the right angle that I wanted to. And then I just started building up with incorporating this instrument into the scene. So what do you see here? It's green stuff, and I've just been like rolling, rolling small, small vines that I've put out like around the instrument, and then grabbing onto the the rocks, um, the elevation that the the miniature stands on, and also all around it, you see the those small speckles that I've mentioned before. In this case, uh, it's not pigment, but it's it is very fine grit um, from um, texture uh, from cork bark and also some of the pre-mixed um, base ready material that I've shown you before. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> here it's very um, it's very easy to see what I'm talking about on the side here with all those small details and small like strands and stuff. I also asked um surreal um he helped me with like should i put a butterfly on his hand so this is me trying out and sending him the picture do you think this character should be holding a butterfly and i got a a um, very uh, uh ecstatic yes on that question um and oh sorry let's see here um, and this is the finished result. So I see now that uh, it isn't exa uh, exactly the finished result. Uh, I did also put some um, flowers on there uh, matching his magenta look um, down um, down underneath where the, the uh, music instrument is. But basically this is um, this is how it turned out and we will be coming back to this a little bit later just to talk about how I thought about when I colored it as well. So moving forward, um, there is there's this. This is an artwork, an existing artwork, and I really love Roman Lapot and how he tackles this subject about basing and environment and creating a scene and atmosphere. So he made these frames and I thought of course that I wanted to do them as well. So I've I've been I I've uh, I've done two now for myself and this is one of them. So I got this artwork set up and I thought make it easy for myself and try to uh, to uh, replicate this. So with that I started out I I got a frame. I started out with as you see here with cork and I got some of the uh, the um, the feel with like making tentacles and and mixing the cork with a lot of like organic shapes, like you see here uh, in the corner, uh, the right corner, you see a lot of like um, round bubbles and stuff. I also cut a uh, plague bearer in half and glued him to uh, to the, uh, to the backdrop to make it look like. To, uh, to be able to get some kind of depth. Like he, he I actually painted his like right arm on the backdrop later so that he uh, is a part of the scene. Um, so, and then I put on the mini in question and he had to be reposed because he didn't match right out of the box. Uh, the artwork. So the, basically, it's only the uh, the arm holding the hammer 
the hammer had to be shortened, the uh, the angle that he's holding it had to be uh, adjusted, and also the legs on how he uh, how he puts his um, right knee forwards, and the other one is kind of like he's taking a step forwards. The uh, the normal miniature is m more or less standing still, and then there were these like faces on his shield here that you see um, uh, those were on the uh, artwork I had to, to try to sculpt them as well because otherwise otherwise they were just like round things there no, no details on the uh, on the miniature itself after that I primed it and this is as many of you know I, I guess um, where our where we can see that our uh, like idea really works out when when making a frame like 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 this um, a scene it's very important to uh, to to light it in the same way so I just pinned the mini down um, and then I made sure to spray the whole scene from the the same angle so that everything was set in the same ambient lighting and then I could remove him paint the backdrop paint the scene and then place him back in and here is the finished result um, really proud with it so yeah um, might be coming back later as well as to the uh, uh, how I thought about painting this with colors as well. We just go through the the building process right now and we can come back and look at some of the color choices and and how and why. Um, so I don't have too many pictures about this but this was a, a really ambitious project of mine. As you might see I broke apart an old Game Boy and I built a little diorama that I lit. As you see here it's a uh, um, there's a little bit uh, there's a little light that will go on top of this and there is uh, like grass strands and yeah there is, there is a lot of things going on in inside of here and the knobs on the side of the uh, Game Boy can be uh, like when you adjust contrast and volume on the Game Boy the the knobs I I glued um, plastic wire to some butterflies so that you can actually move the nubs and move the butterflies like flapping in front of the screen and then like this is just inside when you're looking into the window there you have the butterflies as well like flapping and then I put my mascot right center and let him um, yeah and there you go it was a very fun project but yeah it took some time and could be was frustrating uh, time from time also. Um, here is a very basic base, um, but it had a very specific function in mind. So uh, as you see here, maybe you uh, at the back here, here is the mini that, I, that will be going on, on top. There's, this is a Slender Man from KDM. And he has so tiny, tiny uh, feet and you can't pin him and he will for sure fall off the base if you don't do anything about it. So what I did was that I built up this um, uh, tree, this uh, branch, and to be able to get more connection points when gluing him down. The base is basically just a lot of cork bark uh, and a at our root so nothing in particular but here you have him glued down senethold and he really uh, like when you you I always use super glue because you just uh, you just have to make a choice and super glue it down and even and often very often I use uh, like an activator as well you just make it hard really fast and yeah there's no going back and here is the finished result so the thing about this one, um, we can also uh, I can say right uh, away, this is the you the the you who glue that I mentioned before um, on the back here, the strands going to the trees, and the thought about this was of course that when you w watched him from the front, he would 
like look rather bland but when you turned him he would be gross and grotesque and bloody um that was the thought at least moving forward this is just one of those times when a 3d base came in handy but as i said before I wasn't uh, I used it in tandem with a lot of different parts so what I did here was that I filed it down so I had one part like a I would say a, a rocky rocky uh, ground with um, you could call it like uh, dust or something blowing I don't know um, and then the other part was cork and I thought that I would do like a road on the cork like a, um, a roadside so that you have like two parts and I really wanted to do something different so I made a stoplight and this is just if we if we dissect it for a moment this is a a 25 millimeter base in the back the black rim that you see that I cut in half it's a the the gray bit um, is uh, something that that I got from a another kit the blue things you see are like beads for from like a child uh, beads set that you can build necklaces out of that I caught in like slanted poses and then I put like silica beads that you get in um, when you order like textiles like bags and stuff you get like small packages of things that will soak up the moisture I put them inside of the beads to look like lights and then you have one of those cords or um, yeah, wires that we uh, saw from the Nurgle kit like before. Moving forward, I put on some texture paste, and I put the uh, and put the uh, base uh, thing that that comes with the miniature on top, and this was the finished base. So yeah, the only thing that one one might ask that um, defies logic is why is the light actually. Uh, lit <laughs> but yeah that was just um it, it is it just had to be done because OSL is kind of cool uh it's just a finished mini with the orc on top and uh yeah let's move forward here we have a uh, another base with a lot of cork uh i made a fence i tried to the mini itself came with a, large, uh, a, a, a rather large piece of terrain that I just try to incorporate. The, the texture you see directly on the, uh, on the base is just beach sand mixed with a lot of super glue. I just let it run, like, uh, I, uh, I just let it run, I mean. So you, yeah, you really get like, uh, it dries while it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's running and then you'll, you, you, you kind of get this effect. Uh, on top of this, I put a lot of uh, pigments and there you have the poster that I mentioned before. I really thought it was fitting because the pose of the mini itself, he is holding kind of like a rebel stance, trying to tell that story again. It's just one more picture. Um, and then there is those very large miniatures uh, when you have a large mini miniature, you should always take advantage and make some kind of epic base for it. Uh, here is my stone horn. Um, see here, I okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the way I see, but yeah, you get the point. Um, it's a lot of it's it's a big tree, and I got a uh, I got a stone in there, and I got a uh, pillar tilting, and yeah, it's a lot of dynamics and the elevation here is actually built with like regular metal foil so i just crunkled it up and put it um on the base and then i just put like a thin level uh, uh like layer on of milliput uh, on top just to make it set and the stone uh even if it looks real is actually cast out of acrylic resin from the blue stuff that i showed you guys before so I just made a mold and I cast that. So it doesn't like, it's very, very, it's very light. It's not at all that heavy. And then moving forward, we have a very personal piece that I made uh, during Butterfly for Hannah. 
if you guys have heard about that. Um, I ran a, uh, uh, a thing called Butterfly for Hannah for my late sister some years ago, and this was my um, personal piece connected to that. So I made a um, brick wall again. These are individual bricks cast in resin that I uh, laid down one one at a time. And then I just, when, when I glued them down, I had all these kind of um, spaces in between. I just uh, took a uh, the same kind of resin and then just poured it on top, making it settle in those recesses. And this is the result of uh, after Senato and some painting. And this is the, the finished result when I when I painted it up and put uh, the miniature on and some tufts and stuff. Um, if you haven't seen it before, I also made some uh, waves. So this was kind of, it, this was a cool way, uh, thing, thing to try out. Uh, it's a two component glue that, again, I heard something, but I, okay, I got a minute or so left, yeah. Okay, it's, uh, we'll try to haste it up then. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically this, I just pour, pour, uh, pour this component on top of these um, um, cotton wads and I just pulled it out and then we had this waves that I made for Squidmore's miniature. And I did the same thing with pure pigments, uh, like orange pigments, and I made a base for Bellacor as well with lava waves. So yeah, I think uh, I had thought maybe I can just show you guys very quickly here. Um, I just want to mention when you have the base set, it's very important that you also um, paint it with this with the correct kind of colors so atmospheric painting is it's the shit it's the it's the bee's knees so this was a really really fun part uh, like painting i did um the basing itself isn't that um, much that i've did but what you see here is of course it's lit in uh, atmospheric painting and you have the blue contrasting the red and one side every highlight every shadow everything is lit with the same kind of colors, depending on what side you turn the miniature on. So every miniature that I've just shown you, the you have to connect the miniature to the base with your colors, as well as if you have pigments, try to use your um, things to, to make them live in the same world. Uh, this is the other side of the same miniature. So yeah, uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, have uh, the time to go through everything that I had planned to show you guys. Uh, sorry for rambling on too much. Um, but that is um, basically it for me then, I guess. So if you have any questions, um, throw, throw them at me now. Or yeah, just get back to me on the Discord. You know where to find me, I guess. Um, this has been... Uh, Peter from Witness My Minis, and now it's time for some drunk pla. I I believe uh, you don't have to drink, or and you don't have to paint any uh, gunpla to uh, join. Everybody is welcome. Come and hang out and have a good time with us. Okay, Peter up. Hi, it's Peter here again. Um, since the uh, class got cut short, I thought I'll just go back over the things that I uh, wanted to end on um, with the uh, class for creating a scene over at SquidCon 2024. So yeah, let's let's just jump in where we uh, where we ended up. So we should we will be looking at the uh, iPad once again here and the um, pictures for some of the uh, the color choices that I've that I've made on the um, basing material. So if we go back to the, um, uh, let's see here. Let's go back to this one again, the flower knight. Um, so I, as I said in the uh, end 
of the first part was that uh, you should be sure to make sure to uh, uh, incorporate your color choices of your base into your miniature. First of all, as you see here, the uh, the magenta and the green have a really good complementary um, entanglement going on. And so how should we incorp incorporate the green in the miniature? First of all, you see the vines. I, of course, had the idea for the vines on the lower parts because of the in the miniature. Let's see, just pick it right here and I'll show you guys. So on the uh, on, on the miniature itself, we have uh, this part here. Let's see, right? Oh, hold on. I have a bad. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Um, so on the miniature here, we have some vines going from the back onto the sword. So that's why I had the first um, thought of doing that on the um, to incorporate the instrument onto the base itself. And then if we t like take our um, color picker here, we can actually move and we'll con and we can see in the reflections of the gold, we'll find green tones. And that's because the NMM of the lower part of the mini should be reflecting the green of the base. So that's one way of trying to incorporate the mini and the base, both with sculpting and also with colors. So let's take a look at another picture. Uh, I promise you, this was the kit that I was talking about before. I promise I show you guys. Um, so here is a, this is the drone um, that the bits was left over from. Here is another uh, example like the one that I did with Slenderman. This guy is actually hovering above, uh, above the base because I have this, this connection point here. Let's just, uh, I have to select that layer. We'll just have a uh, red color again so we can show you guys here. So this is the connection point and other, the other thing is just he's, he's just flowing uh, above the base. Just uh, yeah, just one way of, of, of doing it. Uh, let's see where to go next. Uh, do, 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 do. This is this is also like a very simple way to just show you guys what I mean. Um, same thing with like with the um, uh, with the magenta and the green base that we have had on the flower night. I made sure that the skin was going in the blue direction, so that I had a contrasting with the orange of the flames. But with any OSL, OSL is a great way to incorporate and put everything in the same scene because of if you have the same lighting, it really tricks the eyes of like putting all the, all of it together and making it like okay, these these things are connected. So we can see this in several parts on this mini. Just change pencils. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we can see it on the wings. We have the orange OSL coming from the flames. We can also see it on the uh, from the sword. We have purple OSL coming here, and we have purple OSL going on the base over here. So that's just very basic things, and also the the same with the OSL here. So we have like three different OSLs uh, going on, connecting the base and the mini with one another. Yes, so let's see here if we can look at something else. <laughs> this one was rather fun. This is a um, <clears throat> this is a backdrop and a plinth that I made, and like I mentioned before, I made a uh, a scene and. This scene was to make the uh, the miniature really pop, 
I wanted I wanted it to be very like dulled down, very um, muted, but at the same time, as you see here and as you've seen maybe on my other pieces, I I like working with kind of saturated colors. But if we just take that away for a second, just uh, yeah, this is supposed to be water if that isn't clear, uh, and ripples, and we'll take forwards. So this is the mini that is sitting sitting in on this little scene and the light in between the 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 trees is going this way and she is lit in that way and this blue this bluish light is as you see here on on her bone crown it's in all those bone colors and it's on the and it's on the stone and it's in all of the the highlights as well on her skin even if it's not as prevalent because the skin itself is kind of magenta and skin looking of course but uh, bone being so white it absorbs the light and you have these very bluish um, highlights connecting her with the light and the atmosphere and the scene and I made the uh, I made the choice of making everything behind her this color because I know I wanted to paint the skull red and contrast that um, so you'll, your eye should be drawn to the miniature. So that goes back to what I said in the beginning. The, the, the scene and everything is just a part to put everything together and, um, and make it work as a whole. But to pull your focus to the miniature. Um, okay, I also had planned to just show you guys my idol uh, and he, some of his works. Not the, yeah, he, here he is, Roman Lapat, everybody. Awesome uh, at everything he does. Humble, awesome, nice, very, a, a wonderful guy but also an amazing miniature printer and an advocate for making bases and atmospheric scenes. He makes stories, really. So this is one of my favorite pieces of his. It's a toy car. He put a lot of like texture on it. He made a story. I love how he incorporates different kind of angles instead of just making everything like standing flat. He he isn't beholden to any kind of plinth or anything. He really thinks outside of the box. Um, this was just one of many pieces of, of, of his that uh, maybe not the first one that everybody's thinking about, but this is just, I just thought it was a perfect uh, like study to show you guys what he's doing, uh, like doing here with uh, in means of composition. Every line here go towards the mini it points in in like in one way showing you where you should look and this one is just amazing um, here you see how he works with different kind of materials and how he is a master of going in with small and big and just a clutter of things to look at and it might not might not look as much uh, like a big thing right now but look at the finished piece it's just insane okay then um doo -doo. yeah uh, let's go back to the camera the last thing i wanted to show you guys was some in in person miniatures um, so just to show you what I meant with costing this guy looks like he's standing on a stone right uh, I've incorporated it with some pigments here but it isn't a stone this is blue stuff cost acrylic resin so it's very lightweight but it uh, works and it looks kind of cool um, one of the first things that I did was paint a Orga Kingdoms army. That's my, it's the only army that I've painted for myself. And 
it's wonderful to paint Orga Kingdoms because they have big bases and you can do a lot with them. So, uh, and the, well, one of the first units that I really put that into was Mornfang units. I'm not sure if everybody knows what Mornfangs is, but it's these guys. So they, they are running very like riding big hogs. Um, and as you see here, uh, cork painted like bluish. I put some tufts here, uh, a lot of pigments going on, a, a broken down wheel. This, I, this, this was one of my like first basing attempts. Not at, at all like perfect, but I mean, it, it does the job in, in, the, um, in the army perspective. What I do like about this one in particular though, is that they come in units of th uh, three and I did, I did them like this. So they actually fit together. And because you have these big bases and I could do like one big unit, like one base holding two units, and depending on how the uh, the game shapes out, I can just exchange and and uh, yeah, if I have one unit left or if I have two units left, this is this is what's uh, what it's going to be about, and then I can really make this fit together like one is single unit, and because I don't have to put them all on each other like one base each, I actually could put them like rather dynamic. So you you have like one of them going in front of the other, like different um, elevations, really fun stuff to base. And yeah, I'm really pleased with the result and they look great on the gaming table. Uh, so I think, I think that was it guys. Um, there was, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't have, that I didn't, um, I wasn't able to, uh, to show you guys everything live, but hopefully you found the stream here and you, uh, you get what I, um, and, and you get the, uh, the idea of the class. And as I said before, you know where I, where I am and this video will be on YouTube. So you can just ask your questions down below or just come and, hang, and hang out in my discord or yeah, just holler. I'll, I'll be around. So if you have any questions, yeah, you know where to find me. Thanks for tuning in guys. Bye-bye.